My name is Dean Roscoe and I'm a Wilcom Embroidery Software Trainer and Digitizer. In this short video I'm going to walk you through some of the new features that can be found in Wilcom Embroidery Studio E3. There are nearly 200 new features and enchantments in the latest version and you can see the first one as soon as you open a new template. Now we've got one central area where we can choose our fabric type, our background and display colours and even the file format that we want to output in one central area. I'm going to start by importing an EMB file that I made earlier. It's a lot quicker to do this in the new version, there's now no longer any need to go through the menu system because we've got two new icons at the top here for importing artwork and importing embroidery. The reason that I've opened this particular design is so I can demonstrate the new resequence toolbar. What we have here is a design consisting of six different objects and each object is a different colour. And we can see the order that these objects sew out here on our colour object list on the right. The design starts with blue, followed by red, then green, pink, yellow and finally black. We can easily change the order that this design sews out by moving objects up and down using the arrows on the left. Or if the design consists of multiple blocks of colours then we can do the same thing but instead of moving object by object we can move colour by colour. If we want to resequence the design by colours then we can do that too. I'm going to drop in some more colour objects now. I'm going to press Ctrl and A so everything's selected on the screen. And now when we click the sequence by colour icon, we get a pop-up box that's asking us what order would we like the new colour arrangements to sew out. I'm going to tell it that I'd like green to sew out first by moving it to the top. It's going to be followed then by blue, red, yellow, black and finally pink. Watch what happens here now with the colour object list on the right when I click OK. There we go. Our design has been resequenced by colour. We can also resequence a design by the order that objects are selected. So to demonstrate this, I'm just going to remove some of these objects. And if we go back to our colour object list here on the right, we can see it starts with green, followed by blue, followed by red. Now I want to change this so it goes blue, red, green, so whilst holding down the control key, I select in that particular order. Blue, red and green. Now all I need to do is go to my resequence toolbar and click on the sequence by select key and it's done. Now I'd like to show you a big improvement that's been made to the slow redraw function. The shortcut shift and R and I'm sure that you're all used to seeing it slow redraw this way. You can speed up and slow down using the slider at the bottom. But now in E3, if we're in true view mode, we get a much more realistic playback. And the part that I really like is the stitch range slider here found at the top. What this allows us to do is backtrack through the design up to the point where we're interested. So for me here it's going to be the letter L. And now if we press play, we redraw from that particular point. In E3 there's been a big change made to the Input C tool. Traditionally Input C has always been used for making fixed width columns where the stitches always run at 90 degrees to the baseline. Now if we go in reshape mode and hold down shift we can change that angle to whatever we like. So a good example where this feature can be used would be on uh, say a capital letter A. What would happen here is where these horizontal stitches meet the vertical stitches, they tend to pull each other apart which would leave the fabric showing where they intersect. So now you can select the input C shape, go in reshape mode, hold down shift and drag and change that angle so the issue no longer happens.
having the ability to change the angle of our input C allows us to create some really nice stitch effects. So if I was to freehand draw a letter S, when I generate the stitches they won't be a fixed width column, we'll get italics and we can change that angle to whatever we want. I've used this for creating some three-dimensional borders. An example here, if I bring in a fill stitch letter E, what I'm going to do is use my automatic border tool to quickly border in input C, but because we've got it in italic mode, we get that 3D look. Again, move the angle and maybe increase the width until we get the effect that we're after. Whilst we're on the subject of letters, I want to tell you that there are now 15 new alphabets in E3, including quite a few run stitch alphabets that are great for those tiny, tiny letters. And there's also a new feature called multi-level break apart. I'm going to demonstrate this feature by importing in a file consisting of three lines of letters, but it's one single object. In the past, if we needed to perhaps border maybe this letter E or change the sew out order so it goes from left to right, but we want to dictate where that start point is, then we would need to break the lettering objects apart in order to do that. The problem is that letters are made up of multiple objects and when they're broken apart we end up with so many different individual objects that putting them all back together again at the end is a bit of a chore. Now with multi-level break apart it's been made so much easier. What we do now is we click the break apart button and our lettering is split into three different lines. If we select a line and we click break apart it breaks apart into two separate words and if we select one word and click break apart it then splits into individual letters and finally when we select a letter and click break apart it then splits into its individual objects so the beauty of this is everything else around it is kept intact so regrouping is no longer the issue that it used to be. Before I go I want to show you two features in E3 that really can't be missed. The first one is a brand new underlay. Now we've always had tatami underlay, we've had an edge run underlay, we've had zigzag and we've had double zigzag. The problem with zigzag is you're always restricted to those underlay stitches being 90 degrees to the baseline. In E3 that's not the case because now we have the ability to change the angle. So watch carefully on the screen now as I take the angle from 90 degrees to 140 and see what happens. Now you don't need me to tell you how much extra loft that's going to provide than a standard zigzag that's running more or less at the same angle as the top stitches. We can apply this underlay to double zigzag too. So I'm going to take the angle a little bit lower. We'll take it to 118 and let go. And you can see that we can start to create some really interesting underlay effects. Finally, I'd like to demonstrate outlines and offsets. This allows us to very, very quickly add borders to objects or groups of objects in three different ways. I'm going to demonstrate this now by creating three identical object groups and using the tool to border them one by one. So I click on the toolbar for outline and offsets which brings up the control panel. Choose method one. I'm going to use a border method of input C. It can be any stitch type that you like and we're going to do it in a color black. Click OK and the borders instantly generated. Now I'm going to do the same for the second group but this time use method 2 and then finally method 3. Okay now we can clearly see that method 2 it's ignored where the 
red and where the yellow shapes intersect and just bordered the whole object. Method 1 and method 3 though, they look quite similar, but there is a difference. Method 1 has bordered the whole of the red rectangle, which we can see if we move these shapes out of the way. Whereas method 3 has ignored where the overlap takes place. So from an embroidery perspective, this is definitely the method you would use so that you don't see any impression of embroidery from the border that's stitched below the yellow. Now let's take a look at the offset function. For this I'm going to bring in some lettering. It's just plain fill in one direction. I'm going to select the tool again but this time instead of creating the outlines we're going to create some offsets. So by default here we can see that there's going to be a run stitch offset, it's going to be coloured blue and it's going to take place two millimetres away from the outside of our red letters. Now we can keep on adding more and more of these offsets so let's do a couple more. My next one I'm going to change it to a green. Instead of a run we'll choose, we'll choose a motif run and we'll step that four millimetres away from the run stitch that happens below it. We'll do one more this time we'll do we'll do a stem stitch we'll make that red and we'll step that we'll leave that at four actually four millimeters away from the motif run that it does before so that's our three borders set up all we've got to do now is click OK and they're instantly generated for us I hope you've enjoyed this short presentation showing you just some of those 200 new features and enchantments that can be found in Embroidery Studio 2.0.